Thanks, Andrew and Anthony. You're here once again. You got out of your economy lately bubble, and now we're here to talk about shippers, but also housing prices. That's right. So maybe we're still in a bubble. If there is a bubble, I don't want to say there's a housing bubble, <laughs> but there is def definitely something going on. And what we have here is new, so, new one home sales, so mm -hmm. new single family home sales. And so we're looking at that. That's one of the areas I've been watching closely as it deals with overall housing and construction. So right. new one, one home sales are a much smaller segment of the overall housing transaction market. So we're looking at overall housing transactions. Existing homes are going to make up a much larger portion of it. So mm -hmm. we're going to look at well over 90% or just around 90%. We're looking at overall home sales. It's going to be existing homes. But New home sales are important as it deals with freight and of course downstream movements. And so what we have here in the blue line is our new one home sales, which tick down, which we're gonna talk about here shortly, but we also have our orange line here, which is uh, purchase, sorry, for our uh, consumer durable goods purchasing. So looking at um, those app appliances, those furnitures, soft, um, I think we have it in as resl.s. OFA for you <laughs> sonar users in there, those heavy sonar uners, users um, and sonar. So what we have here is those durable goods being purchased and how it kind of relates to the influx of new homes and new home transactions. So if you're in the market for a house right now, if you're trying to buy an existing home, like you better be fast because if it's on the market for less than like 17 minutes, it's gone. If you're trying to build a new home, you better have an influx of cash in your pocket, right? Because we're not just talking about increase in those raw materials and lumber and everything that you need to build from plumbing and pipes, but you're also talking about expenses and really just the inability to get any type of materials at all sometimes. That's exactly right. So we're looking at new home sales or new home starts. We are looking at those input prices that have increased overall price for homes up over $30,000 uh, 30, for those new homes. So that's something very significant. It would be something that was just slightly like maybe two or 3000 You can kind of write that off here or there and kind of make sense. But $30,000 on average is something very significant. We're looking at um, those new home sales overall. The average price right now in the U.S. is right around $435,000 um, for those new home sales averages. When we're looking at existing homes, those are also being propped up. So because such a tight inventory for existing homes, that's leading to more and more pressure for these new homes to kind of get built up and brought online. So I've got someone who has been trying to buy a house here in Chattanooga since June of 2020. So really at the start of the pandemic, and even he was finding stress and having a really hard time getting those houses back in June. And now it's like you stop trying because if you're not offering 10, 15, even $20,000 over asking price, that seller's not even gonna look at you. If it's, it's a great time to be a seller, it is an awful time to be a buyer. <laughs> That's exactly right. And so when we're looking at our home purchasing sentiment index from Fannie Mae, they break it out into different components, whether people think it's a good or bad time to buy, mm -hmm. sell, whether they think that they're in a good position to make a home purchase. Um, these, all these factors kind of go into, like you said, making a home purchase. The lowest point ever was reached for, is this a good time to, buy a house, mm -hmm. so buyers are really reluctant because it's being so propped up. But what we have here in this orange line is to kind of illustrate that downstream impact for those new homes being sold. So when we have existing homes, we usually see, or new home sales or any kind of home transaction, we usually see an increase in appliances and, and, and furniture and things like that really right. kind of being brought into the home. Now what we're seeing a, a decline in new home sales, I'm not saying that there's also gonna be a decline in overall um, goods being purchased throughout the economy, although there is something to that with um, those manufacturers kind of being behind with those shortages and commodities. A lot of home builders are really kind of pulling forward some of those appliances to fill those homes. So we're right. seeing almost like a hoarding effect for uh, dishwashers or refrigerators and things like that that would go into a new home, a stove. Um, so we're starting to see those kind of get pulled forward. And I wouldn't be too surprised if there is some type of negotiation of take home as is, you know, supply your own appliances or something like that. I don't right. know if that's even going to be a possibility, but I wouldn't be too surprised if something like that were to happen in the near future. So you mentioned the B word bubble. I'm going to ask you to pull out your crystal ball and look into the future. We know that eviction moratoriums are going to be coming up ending here sometime in the early fall, assuming that they're not extended again, which with over 50% of American adults now vaccinated, I don't think that it's very likely we're going to want people back to paying their bills and getting back to work, right? But with those eviction moratoriums come those landlords who are maybe holding those houses that are renters, not being able to pay their mortgages anymore because it's going to be really, really hard to pay back six, 
eight, a year's worth of back rent at that point. Do you see a bubble popping and then all of a sudden all of these people who are landlords over these rental houses now having to sell? That's going to be a big one. And you're sounding like a nice skeptical economist. <laughs> I love it. And so we're going to be watching. That's going to be one of the areas that we're going to be watching closely if there is going to be an influx of people that are going to be evicted. Thinking right now that there is going to be likely some type of federal aid or assistance in getting those individuals ramped back up into the workplace so they're not a mass evictions on the streets. The other thing is for those homeowners, those individuals that have a mortgage, are going to be able to, in some programs, apply those missed rent up to, I think, 12 to 18 months potentially mm -hmm. to the backside of their mortgage. So maybe just extend their mortgage just by year. So that's going to be a solution for those um, homeowners, but renters are going to be in a little bit more difficult situation. But I do believe that the government will probably step in so there's not an influx of um, uh, evictions uh, throughout the country coming up in October. A little bit of a safety net. I've been watching economy lately, learning to think like an economist. If you want to be able to do that also, watch economy lately.